So we're participating in a sea trial today, but obviously, if you look behind me, it is not our boat. This thing is huge. We are on board the HH-88, their first sailing super yacht. All carbon, it's just bananas. So we're gonna introduce you to some of the crew, definitely talk to the owner, Sean, and uh, I don't know, have a nice day at sea. Of course, this is the sea trial of this boat, and this will be, you know, I'm sure a week long or more process for this vessel. First of all, it's not actually in the possession of the owner yet, or owners, which is Sean and Jamie. This boat is still owned by HH, and so that makes Paul the captain for now. And then of course they'll take ownership at the end, but that also means that they haven't had a chance to move on. And so you're seeing it in kind of a chaotic state. It's not the perfect time for a tour, but, 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 luckily, Sean has decided to start a channel way back when, when he decided to build this boat, like from conception. So you can go way back and watch the whole story there. And he's done a proper walkthrough of the entire vessel because that would be a video all of its own because this is an 88 foot sailing catamaran with just a lot going on. So we're gonna get a little taste of that today. First things first, let's start with Sean the owner because he is on board today. That's how we got our invitation. So thank you, Sean. And kind of get the scoop on how this all came to be. Before we dive into the boat, I feel like we need just a teeny tiny bit of a background on you as a person, if you're cool sharing that. US native, but left California when I was 14 uh, to go to Canada and finished off university and everything through there, started my company in Canada. And then from Canada, moved down to the Caribbean, and we currently reside in the Cayman Islands. Water has always been a very important thing for me, so this is just kind of the next step for us, I guess. And then really quickly, what, like, your professional career, like, because this does tie into a lot of this boat, so I feel like we need to tell people about what you do. It does, but what nobody really actually knows is I went to seven years of culinary school. All that that taught me is how much I did not want to work in the restaurant industry. But you still um, love to cook. I still love to cook yeah. and that's why downstairs is what it is. But I also did another major in housing finance and structure and stuff like that. So as much as I'm not an engineer, I'm very good at reading plans. And that's what I've always done. I got into custom construction and then specifically student housing, which is a whole animal on its own. And I've always done custom home construction on the side. What was the dream? What sparked the idea to want to get a boat and live on it and sail about the world. Cause you could have just had a house on the beach, but you wanted a boat. So why a boat? So I've actually been through that whole house on a beach thing. Um, it's not all it's chalked up to be. Definitely a boat because I could take a luxury apartment and move it anywhere in the world. This is a home for my wife and I. So unfortunately she is not here right now. She's back home in Canada, but. Taking care of business, um, doing important things, but yes. yeah, she's here in spirit. Yes. <laughs> Her name is Jamie and she's lovely. We got to see Jamie for like the first time, I think really in your last video. Uh, she pops up every once in a while. Okay. Um, we're not a lifestyle channel. The channel's not about us specifically and she's, in the background of all these videos because she's behind the camera. The dream has gone through a couple of different iterations. Uh, and it wasn't until I finally did like a bare boat charter in the BBIs with a whole bunch of our friends that I said, okay, I definitely want a catamaran now. And then it just kind of evolved into, okay, what do I want to have on this thing? And that's how we kind of came up with our spec sheet. And then it was beyond that, it's how do we power all of those things? Yeah. Because this is a giant energy plant. This whole boat is just nuts with energy. Well, it's a small floating island. It, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So you've decided that you want to buy a boat so that you can travel about the world. And you had clearly must have been a very specific idea of what you wanted in a vessel. I stumbled across these plans um, that Paul Hakes uh, originally drew up almost 15 years ago or so. And I looked up who the naval architect was and it was Marillion Melvin. I got into contact with Gino and then he said, there's only one company on the planet that can build this boat for you. And then I started negotiating with Hudson Yachts and five years later, five years, we're standing here. Yeah, there's a lot going on. It's like, it's gotta be a bit chaotic at the same time. It is, um, there's a great team of people that are nailing it down and in construction, the last 5% is equally as difficult, if not harder than the first 95%. Wow. 
because it's all those little minute details that sometimes take time and you have to destroy in order to rebuild properly. That's um, a good way to, to say that. And I think a first time buyer, there's no way you can understand that. I think unless you've had some sort of previous experience with something, another project of a similar scale, which right. I think you have a good perspective on just because of, I mean, you had buildings and you're managing student housing of yeah. all things, <laughs> right? Like. The most destructive creatures on the planet yeah, probably are the college students. students. Were the problem. It was mostly their parents that were the problem. <laughs> <laughs> their kids never did anything wrong. Oh, sure. <laughs> they would never. Yeah. So now here we are. We're on your sea trial, which is still not technically your boat yet. Nope. Yeah. Not my boat. <laughs> yeah. Not, not your boat. Does that give you a little bit of relief? Oh, it does. Absolutely. Like not having that responsibility just yet. So anything that happens, you're like, not, not on me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Captain Dave is still up there driving the boat from time to time and I've taken the helm station and everything like that and we're starting to play with some of the toys on board and but you a boat this size a project this big you need to be able to be on board in order to just figure out what is or is not working mm -hmm. so there are a million different features on this boat obviously you have an entire channel dedicated to it because there are so many different things that we could point out but if you can only show us three of your like unique features that are on this boat what would they be uh definitely the galley so this is sean's probably favorite space on the boat i would guess definitely one of them i spent the most time here this is kind of a, a happy spot for me we've got everything that you could possibly want to be a fine dining restaurant on the water for 10 15 people at any given time enough capacity and everything as well plus tons of storage but the most important thing in the reason I like this space so much is just the layout that we have over here on this side. One person can be set up here with a cutting board, and then you can have a whole other person. Prep chef, right here. Right there, or standing on this surface. And this is actually just the crew mess because it opens and closes, and it's a comfortable table in the meantime. And directly behind it, we've got Jason's favorite yeah. side of the of the galley. Jason, why is that your favorite side of the galley? <laughs> Coffee. That's a new toy for our boat? Yeah, it's just as soon as you want to upgrade to an 80 foot plus catamaran. And they said we get a full length mirror and a coffee machine if we upgrade to an 80 foot or more. <laughs> Immediately underneath it, this is where all the plates and everything go for breakfast service and all the utensils are just down there. I like that there's an entire Nokia like, no, this is just for breakfast. Uh, this is just so anybody can be in the galley, and if a guest on board needs something, they can come down here, prepare a coffee. There's a whole bunch of fridge space down here as well, and we can keep snacks or whatever. This is a large vessel, right? Yeah. And it is like intended to be obviously your home. You'll have your friends and family and, and guests on board. We also charter this vessel as well. We do. Yeah, it's because you'll take a break from boat life because we all need a short break from boat life. <laughs> it's what helps it um, stay enjoyable, <laughs> right? it's home for you and you want it to feel like home for everybody else. This is not like your typical charter boat where like you would never go in the galley of if you chartered another vessel like this because you would have full crew no, on board. To, yeah, you'd have staff doing that. Yeah. yeah, so this is like, it's more like you're, everybody's actually living and using the vessel versus like just being catered to. Yeah, that's, that's the intent. And we have set it up this entire way that when the boat is under charter, you come down this companionway into the galley, everything forward, everything behind this door is dedicated crew space. There's so much extra space that we've just dedicated to crew comfort on board that we could have taken as owner privilege or whatever, but we tried to give them as much separation as possible from the actual guests because guests can be a lot when they're on board. Yeah. Um, and at least that way they have their own space. They can have their downtime. They can and, retreat. Yeah, exactly. So then what's the next one? Again, you made it very complicated. I know, I know. To just a few things. Dinner and a movie, anyone? So this is hands down one of my favorite features on the boat. There's two movie theaters on board. All of this had to be seamlessly integrated into the whole onboard network. Wi-Fi signals does not transfer through carbon whatsoever. You need to put a, a booster in every single cabin. We have a 40 terabyte drive that's already got about a thousand movies on it and about a hundred different TV shows, complete series. You are your own Netflix. <laughs> yep, we are pretty much. I think of like Studio Movie Girl, you know? I'm yeah. like, <laughs> what it feels like. And then if you want, you come back here and you're lounging. And although I will say your tables feel so nice, but you want it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
It's the joy of resin. They're easy to fix. Yeah, I guess so. But I'm like, ooh, this is not like the boat you want to put your feet up on the furniture. Oh, we were doing Except it last for you, night, Will. So. Yeah. <laughs> so then third feature. You only get one more. I know. And it's behind you. Oh, come, hold on. We're about to go outside. Tell me that's not ridiculous. It's like a spaceship. <laughs> so you can launch the jet ski completely separate from the tender, but the jet ski is on top of the tender. There's a built-in crane right behind here. Okay. A door opens, crane pops out, you tie up to the jet ski, you lift the jet ski off, drop it in the water, unhook, and you're off. Are you anticipating like you get somewhere and you're like, I don't need the tender, just give me the jet ski. Exactly. Okay. Uh, that in it, for me, it was kind of a safety thing. It was another system that we could have on board. It's also just storage too. Like, it all fits on the davits of the boat versus like being up on deck or taking up additional storage yeah. elsewhere. Do you happen to know the load strength of your davits alone? Like that's gotta be intense. I think it's close to 4,000 kilos. Yeah, I mean that's... But those davits, they come in and they're sandwiched in between these two F structural bulkheads. So it's very strong. It's a lot. That's a lot right back there. And uh, that one thing. So I get why you're like, and this is one of my other favorite features. Uh, the engineering behind it as well, because again, it all ties in seamlessly with the dive station and everything and uh, the double depth seating. So you can sit there with a dive tank on if you need to, and you're not smashing the hell out of everything. And again, you're like charter guests. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> don't hurt my stuff, please. <laughs> please don't break my boat. Because yeah. Everything got really quiet. So maybe we go, go see if they're going to hoist something. Hoist. Good afternoon, I'm Sandy Bottoms, reporting to you live from the sea, and that's no BS. It seems that international sailors are struggling to access their favorite websites and apps, but some old salts have reported that if you use a good VPN like today's sponsor Surfshark, it can avoid those geo restrictions because Surfshark is a virtual private network that allows you to change your IP address to virtually place yourself anywhere in the world to unblock websites and content that you couldn't access otherwise so that you can avoid geo restrictions on sites like Netflix or apps like Venmo. Plus you can surf the world wide web in confidence knowing that Surfshark encrypts all the data between your device and the internet so that no one can track or steal your personal information because that would take the P right out of pirate. Wait, what's that? One second. I'm being told if you use the discount code WINS, you get three extra months for free. Aw, oh, ship, that's a good deal. Especially considering there's a 30 day money back guarantee. <laughs> to try it out, just click the link down in the description or scan the QR code on the screen. For CBS News, I'm Sandy Bottoms. This was on the starboard prop. Rope wow. cutter couldn't get through it. We had to send in our trusty crewman here, Chris. To, I mean, it probably took most of this small stuff off. Like you can see, there was definitely some cutting happening, but. That was wrapped around the prop. Starboard prop. That's why there was that big vibration happening on that one. It's I guess, just a lot. It's prudent for like fishing lines and stuff, because those are the little ones that get really sucked in. So I like, guess good for keeping stuff out of the hub, but you're never going to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. That was a fair bit of uh, fun little drama. And then of course, which starts the discussion about rope cutters, which we have not selected the box on yet. And I think, uh, yeah, well, there you go. Looks like we're getting rope cutters. <laughs> They're necessary. So it doesn't mean it's gonna work on that as Eric explained, but we'll help in a lot of situations. Well, we've just listed the end is clear. So both are here on both engines now. We've got the Rena Savara on board. So part of our testing is the maneuverability of the boat. And so I have to take her up to full speed, which I'm about to do. And then essentially stop the boat as quickly as I can by going into full reverse. Johnny, yes. wide open throttle, full speed, okay? Okay, yeah, 9.2, okay. Full speed, yeah. The amount of like fishing lines and buoys just floating out in the water. I don't know how Paul is thinking about anything other than navigating. Are we ready? ready? Three, two, one. Distance yeah. 0 0.19 nautical miles. Right. 
Good or so, put him one line. Is that good, Tony? It's okay. It's okay, it's okay. Get her up in the one line. chafe bar on it yeah but we're just pulling the sheet forward just to be easy and we don't have a lot of time here so. yeah deploy solo at any time Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are we even moving? It just feels like we're floating. 44 to an 88. Yeah. I mean, it's only double in every direction. <laughs> we got nine and a half knots of speed? That's supposed to be. Because right. we've got 1.4 of current going off our real starboard quarter. One of the greatest parts of my job, isn't it? The part where Sean says, it's not my boat yet, and we still got to go sailing. <laughs> so I get to play around on a multi-million dollar yacht and crack 10 knots of boat speed on the sail and try not to slosh the water out of the hot tub. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd put that sentence together? <laughs> Pretty cool, isn't it? 10-4 at top speed, I'd reckon, right there. Here's Sean. There's his hot tub. You're sailing at 10 plus knots. At 10 plus, yeah. yeah. Turn it up to 11. What are we putting out right now, Eric? We're racing the tide home. Oh. So we're going to kind of motor sail. So we're going to motor and jib. Can't get there fast enough at this stage. Yeah. Turn you it have up a sailboat. Home. We can sail faster than we can motor. Yeah. It's just tough because we'll sail fast, but in the wrong direction. Uh, we need to navigate all these pots, which is the hardest part about kind of sailing around here. It's yeah. unmarked obstacles. Uh, I'm shaking. Yeah, I'm shaking. Are you? Uh, that was by far my most exciting landing ever. I've never been going that fast, and for it's been that complicated to catch. And then, like, there was me piloting it, but Jason's catch was epic, and I am bummed we didn't have a camera rolling. To get, it was. Well done, well done. That was a deserved award. Holy crap. Uh, I'm shaking, man. It's, it's just always exciting. So much adrenaline. And then we aren't even going fast. This boat is huge. There's not really a lot in the way, but just the air gets dirty. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we got that shot. I'm glad we don't have to do that again for a while. Oh. Ah. Nobody knows. They were just watching nice drones. Yeah, right? exactly. This is Eric working real hard. Oh, hard day at the office, you know. All the hard work pays off. Yesterday I was up at the top of the rig for an hour tuning things and marking halyards, but now we can cash in on all that hard work and just enjoy the boat. That's right. It's a good Pretty, day at the office. Sure is. Pretty lucky here. Clear to floral, stolen. How about you, Jason? How's your day at the office? It's so funny walking around this boat because there's just so many different ways to get 
to each space that it's like you walk out here and there's somebody popping out of a window headed up top or there's somebody coming from the side or from up above it's like you can get anywhere from any direction on this boat yeah baby first shot go oh, halyard there you go. Hang down. Just hiding up some reef lines. Right. <laughs> I uh, tell them to freaking throw their sandwiches overboard and do their jobs. That's definitely making the video. <laughs> <laughs> Heading back in, we gotta beat the tide. At low tide, we can't get past like this little break, so it's over. That's the end. Damn it. Such a short amount of time. Dick, this is good. This is a good time to chat for just a second. I got time. Okay. Okay, well, we'll both sit down. It's a sure for that here. Well, then, so this is a sea trial. So, what's the point of a sea trial? Basically, to Punish the boat. Short, to punish the boat. <laughs> Congratulations, you've been bored. It's going to be a rough entry. <laughs> and and you saw that today. Yeah. We we punished it. Um, and and it's about stress testing things. Because I want if it's going to break, I want to break it now. Yes, please. And um, yeah. so that when um, we hand over to Sean, he's got a beautiful boat that lasts him decades um, for that problem. How many days total do you think it takes to sea trial this vessel? Well, um... Because you're not done yet, I know that. Sure, we, we, we actually haven't had wind conditions yet to uh, fully uh, push it. I'd like to be able to go out there with 16 knots at least, and then we can have full main, full genar, and we can take it right up to its maximum okay. writing moment for that configuration of sail. Okay, well I hear there's a typhoon on the way, so I mean if you're really looking to stress test things, <laughs> yeah. we can see we what can. you can really handle. What was nice today was how good the boat feels under sail. Yeah. She's quiet, she's fast. She feels comfortable. She's, she's, yeah, you almost don't know you're moving sometimes, yeah. which is a little... 10 knots of... We, I don't know what a heel was, but I doubt if it was more than two degrees. It didn't feel like much of anything. It seemed like we were just flat. Yeah, it was very cool. Like a Cadillac. Like a Cadillac. <laughs> on rails. That's on right. Rails. I just still, I mean, really, did you ever think that you were going to build a, a, a boat with a hot tub that sails <laughs> and 10 knots of wind, you know? I, I never thought I'd be sailing a boat kind of in a enclosed, um, Bridge where I've got air comp blowing at me. Ah, oh, <laughs> now he's coming over to the yeah, comfort yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that, that racer inside of you is like, well, I don't know, this is awfully nice. I mean, this is, um, I mean, we're kind of struggling on this home chair right now, right? Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. You know, uh... no harness, no tether, we got air conditioning. <laughs> we could go to the Arctic right now. Something in the way? I, I see is... Dave pointing. Are uh, we good? She's off my pulpit. Yeah, we don't want it. <laughs> Dave, Dave's looking like. Uh, <laughs> uh, when Sean came to you um, many moons ago now with this crazy idea of, I know that you normally build all these like racing performance boats that go really fast, but I would like a hot tub on my flybridge, please. What did you What did you think about that? Initially, there were a lot of kind of like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> you want a you want a fully carbon catamaran. Yeah, that was good. We got that, and then yeah. there was a big boat, and <laughs> that was all good. And then it was like, oh, this flybridge. And then it was like, well, oh, it's going to have a crane to lift a giant jet ski. Uh, then came the hot tub. And then it became quite apparent that um, okay, we're not building um, something that will ever. Uh, go on to the racetrack other than to watch your sisters yeah. go racing but it was to be able to provide a boat that could sail in light wind and sail respectively in a moderate breeze yeah so there's no reason why this boat in a moderate breeze at say 20 knots is going to be doing 14 knots and uh, 15 knots it has uh, gina morelli and eric we've got a it's got a top vpp 
of over 22 knots. Now, yeah, uh, I don't kind of know. bravo the day that uh, <laughs> we, we do that. <laughs> Here's you in the get, background, I saw him look over and smile. <laughs> you got a, uh, yeah, it would be pretty impressive to have this boat at 22 knots, but I'm pretty sure that's not on Sean's, like, top 10 list of things to do in this vessel, is to get it no. at 22 knots. No, so it was really apparent. Sean's that. like, no. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to sail your hot tub at 22 knots? Not the plan, at least. Yeah. <laughs> not when you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chris. This has been his baby for what? Got here in February um, with the task of the first job of commissioning um, this boat from my predecessor and then helping with the ongoing builds, um, designing and commissioning their systems. But this was the first boat to do and certainly a big challenge. To say that it's got a lot of systems is just a bit of an understatement. So there's no way, no way it would again, this would be like a multi-video series if we just covered the systems on this boat. So if it's even possible to just give us like big yep. picture overview. Absolutely, so the boat has a total of 16 200 amp hour lithium ion batteries that are split into a bank of 12 batteries for the house loads and then four batteries for the hydraulic system. Inside this cabinet here, we have three standalone house battery chargers that put out 100 amps each. And then also on the side wall here, we have four three and a half kilowatt combi masters which also put out 100 amps each charge, and also their combined inverter output is 14 kilowatts. <laughs> so the capabilities of the system are getting to about 10 o'clock at night, turning the boat off generators, and running three to four cabins, including the salon, air conditioning on what we call dead ship, which is running off just the inverters and the batteries. And then we can run that through, through from about 10, 11 at night to about seven or eight o'clock in the morning at which time we start the generators. We can charge 700 amps just off the generators. If we start both main engines, we can add an extra 150 amps aside there. And when we've got the solar charging, which does up to about 150 amps, we can charge in the realm of 1100 uh, amps. So we can charge this bank up from 20% depth of discharge in about two hours. Wow. Uh, is your head spinning? Yes. It's a lot of numbers. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up, but it is a lot. This is a like passage going vessel and it's meant to sail and not to burn too much diesel. So I, it sounds like you've set those systems up to kind of like quickly recharge yet have enough of a battery bank. So it's, you're not all this, it's not hundred percent running off of like exactly. generators all the time, which most super yachts all like you they would do. never turn yeah, off, yeah. right? It's very unique. You know, I've done a lot of work on other boats of a similar size, like a Sunreef. Um, and those boats basically switch between the two generators in parallel 24 seven. So on a boat of this size, inevitably you're gonna to have to run a generator at some stage and that's when you're using the main ovens, which are very power hungry. Um, we've got dive compressor, we've got two big water makers. So at some stage, we're gonna to have to run the generator to run these big loads. And the idea is that we maximize that time to charge up our house bank as quickly as possible and give us that nice eight hours of dead ship capability. Which also means everybody gets to sleep at night with no generator no noise, which is still a beautiful thing. Or there's going to be plenty of times where you're going to be sailing and enjoying daytime when the sun's at peak. Exactly. And you'd yeah. be good, great dandy there too. So Absolutely. it is. Yeah, because the, the hydraulics are all 24 volts. So it was designed that way so that the generators could be off when you're sailing and just use the batteries to run the. Um, Winches and the furlers and the main sheet ramps. Yeah. So you've been running around this boat all day. Has it been yes. like that for the whole? It has been, yeah. <laughs> the guys here do, have done a great job and the drawings are second to none, they're world class. So they've certainly made my job um, very easy. But as a case, when you've got uh, Master Vault and C Zone and BNG and you've got all of these systems together, it's quite labor intensive to program everything and to get it all working in harmony. And that's why we've been. I've been living on the boat um, for the last you know, <laughs> 10 days um, so that we can live test these things, you know, testing them in the yard and test them in the factory. You don't quite get that um, that level of uh, commissioning that you can when you're actually living on a boat. Yeah. Is there something that like, I mean, because you spent a lot of time now on all of this that has like really impressed you? The sea zone, like any digital switching system, is kind of what makes these modern boats um, so user friendly whether it's C-Zone, whether it's power uh, PowerPlex, or whether it's Raymarine central switching, Garmin's got one as well. It gives you that ability to set the boat into modes and switch stuff on without, you know, your traditional switchboard with dozens and dozens of circuit breakers that you've got to manually 
turn on and off. It's that automation side of things that's very impressive and leading edge on this boat and will make the difference in the long run. And do you enjoy programming that kind of Absolutely. stuff? Absolutely. The most enjoyable part of this, which we're kind of getting to now, is the entertainment side of things. So at night time when it goes into movie mode and the 65 inch TV pops up from the seat <laughs> behind you, what lighting mode do we go into there? So the strip lighting will dim uh, down, we set the mood lighting, and then there'll be another mode for you know cockpit entertaining, which will involve the jacuzzi as well and how the lighting is set up around that. And of course, to test these systems properly, I have to use them. So that means uh, watching movies, having a jacuzzi, <laughs> Eating outside, otherwise I can't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm starting to understand where this is going. You're like, I build it, so then I have to test Absolutely. it. Absolutely, it has to be tested. Oh, so you're saying you've had to stay on board for the yeah. last 10 days. It's, it's clearly been, been miserable. It's been a very enjoyable part of the job <laughs> and kind of a, a reward of the, the months of hard work leading up to this, yeah. crawling around the yard. Um, and it's nice to, you know, have the sanders and the grinders and all of that come to a conclusion and you can see how wonderful the boat looks without all the protection on. Um, it has been pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, you have to put life jacket on to go. Yeah. Okay, I think if we can get over it, it's cool. Let's do the same. We can anchor out here. Yeah. because, well, Paul's still the captain of this vessel, but as soon as it reaches handover, all that responsibility shifts to Dave here, which... <laughs> <laughs> Dave, have you ever had a vessel this, like, like this boat before? I mean, nobody... It's, no, like, no, and really, this is a, this vessel is a, a first of its kind as well, a full carbon vessel uh, this size. This boat is actually fun to sail, and there's a lot of action and a lot of movement and it's, it's, it's still a good workout. You may not think so because of push button sailing, but um, you work, you see me back here behind the winches yeah. and you're working constantly. So It's going to be exciting. I mean, I just can't fathom this boat on passage. We're looking forward to uh, the passages, but we're also going to be looking forward to the anchorages and playing with all these cool toys Sean has. <laughs> you know, so um, there's a lot to look forward to. This is just the, this is the end of the beginning. How did Sean find you? I was recommended through Morelli and Melvin. This would be my third, fourth HH boat. That oh, I've, really? I've been in, yeah. Wow, okay. It's hard for me, like just being a typical cruiser, to kind of wrap my head around what it must be like to be the captain of a vessel like this because you're living on this boat. You're pretty much on it 24 7. So it feels like almost like a marriage. Well, the boat itself is a marriage. <laughs> that for sure, right? That's marriage number one. Yeah. So now you've got two relationships right. going on. With the local board owners, yeah, you have to make sure that you can gel. Um, it's important that you that you work well with them, that there's no animosity between your ideas, different ideas, and how you operate. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Familiar face. We've hey, got well. Eric of Melvin and Morelli. Really, Go! Oh, I knew I was gonna get it wrong. <laughs> get it wrong every time. That's Come right. on, it's Eminem. That's all that matters. M &M. It's Eminem. <laughs> so, tell us a little bit about your role in this vessel. Sure. Uh, well, Sean came up to us five years ago now, wanted to make this a little bit different, kind of out of the scope of the normal HA. So, we're the naval architects, and we helped them put together the platform. So, the hull shape's kind of like a, an extension, or a, not necessarily a direct scale, but familiar hull shape compared to the rest of the HH family been developing those over the years. Uh, but the biggest difference on this boat is just like the size of the rigging and the hardware and the sails. Like it just goes on forever. Yeah, uh, which we got to see in action today. And they're so big that now you've got hydraulics. Exactly. So all of, this is the, uh, just quick overview first. This is the uh, inner staysail. Uh, it's a permanent stay just because it would be so, so difficult to get it up and down, like in anger, you know? This is the four stay, and then at the front of the lingeron there is the downwind asymmetrical sail. These are on hydraulic furlers, uh, Reckman's, I believe. Uh, that's a Fackner one on the four stay. There's a really complicated hydraulic system in here with 10 pumps, I think, and a whole bunch of batteries. Very complicated system, but you really need it because just even to furl, it takes a fair bit of pressure. Uh, all the winches in the helm station yeah, up there. Like, like there's no hand grinding. I mean, it. you can, but you're going to be there for a day. 
Um, the winches can pull five tons. So like, that's a lot. Um, five tons. Yeah, the sheets are really, really loaded. So you just have to be very careful. We've made the, uh, we've made the, all the sheets two to one just to reduce the loads a little bit at the helm because using a five ton sheet is like really frightening. So at least it's only two and a half. Yeah, we're not um, just worried about rope burn. You'd be like worried about losing a limb at that point. Exactly. So it's a big boat, but we're trying to make it manageable, but try to make it kind of a little sporty too. So how's this project been for you? Like, I mean, it's been going on for a long time and <laughs> There was obviously all the COVID stuff in the middle and we weren't allowed to come here. So actually the first time I saw the boat was only about six months ago. Uh, obviously we've been following it along with video right. updates and everything, but actually seeing it and touching it in person is, uh, it's nice to see. I don't even want to know how many man hours has ended up in this thing, but it's definitely over a few hundred thousand. So it's a lot of labor and a lot of labor of love, but. I mean, a five year project for everybody. It's yeah. a long time to be working on one thing. Exactly. So. Yeah. Oh, well, it was very cool to see it on the way. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's it. The uh, tide is going down and down and down. So we've got to hurry up and get off of this boat or otherwise we're going to be slogging through mud for a very long distance to get back to land. Not that I would oppose to staying on this boat, but they don't have sheets and stuff on board yet. So, you know. <laughs>